Imagine that, locking up a deal with a seller, signing a, and executing a contract, and never actually talking to the seller. It's happened many, many times. All right, guys, welcome to video four in this Masterclass series I'm doing with Joe McCall. Joe? Hey. Awesome to be back here with you in the studio talking about land flipping. And this entire Masterclass, A to Z, how to become a land flipper. And this video is really exciting, Joe, because we're gonna dive in now to finding the deals, right? Finding sellers that own land and where are these sellers and how do we go about finding them so that we can then make an offer, analyze, make an offer and get a good deal. We're gonna do some subsequent videos, I think that are gonna talk more about like, okay, well, now I found a seller, now what? Now what do I say to them? What do I say? We're gonna do scripts and we're gonna talk a little bit about how do I come up with my offer price. But on this video, we wanna primarily focus on where do we find these sellers? And I love, Joe, if you guys have missed the previous videos, please go in order because we've done this really succinctly and Joe's really laid it out so well and we've even pulled up the computer and looked at like exactly how to do this. So none of this is hypothetical, all of this is actually how to do this business, so I love that. And on the last video, we, it was a long video, it was like an hour and we really covered the buyers. So finding the buyers, understanding the buyers, where they're at, what they're doing, multiple different ways of really getting to that buyer um, some of the ways that you contact the buyers and what you say and, and all of that. So now let's dive into sellers. Yeah. This I tell is you, exciting. One of the things that's important, I think, Jerry, to understand is <clears throat> we're not in the real estate investing business. We're not in the house business. We're not in the land business. We're in the what business? Opportunity business. Well, yeah. And I was going to say marketing. <laughs> oh, marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're in the marketing business. Yeah. And, and I think it's important people understand this. <clears throat> Um, if you want to do a lot of deals, I say if you want to make a lot of money, you got to do a lot of deals. If you want to do a lot of deals, you got to make a lot of offers. If you want to make yeah. a lot of offers, you have to talk to a lot of sellers. How do you talk to sellers? You do a lot of marketing, right? So that we complicate totally. this business so much. I mean, it, it's really actually simple. Mm -hmm. There's four things you got to do. Number one is marketing. Mm -hmm. Number two is talk to sellers. Number three is make offers. Number four is follow up. And that's all this business comes down to, but it all starts with marketing. And if you do that consistently, you will do deals. Yeah, it's almost hard not to. Because like, when you've got so many leads coming in, it changes everything. Because if your pipeline is full of leads, um, your mindset changes. Now when you're, when you're talking to these sellers, you're not so desperate. You don't, you're not desperately chasing the seller for mm -hmm. a deal. You're, it's easier to just walk away. Um, so again, sellers can smell your desperation from a mile mm -hmm. away. And if you're now the motivated buyer trying to turn a lemon into lemonade, trying to mm -hmm. turn a non-deal into a deal, you're going you're gonna to lose. And so when you're doing marketing and you've got a lot of leads coming in, it make, now your job becomes disqualifying the bad leads instead yeah. of trying to turn bad leads into good leads. Yeah, Does I love that make that. sense? Yeah. I like to say, I like to think about it like this. Um, you know, you don't really have any control over whether or not a seller is gonna say yes, right? You have, no, you have no control over that. That's completely out of your control. What you do have control over though is how often you give a seller the opportunity to say oh, yes, yeah. which comes down to just quality conversations. And I kind of have a rule that I live by, which is if, if you make five offers a day, however you gotta get there, get on the phone with a distressed mm -hmm. seller or a land seller, and you make five bona fide offers. I don't care if it's verbal or written, but just five legit offers. Not follow-ups from old offers, but five new a day. That's around 25 a week, that's 100 a month. You will do deals. It's impossible not to You do can't deals. not do deals if you're doing 100 offers a month. I love that. I've seen you do that challenge before, yeah. and it's, it's such a great concept because now you're forcing people to focus on what's most important. So, you know, I, I tell people to stop, forget your business cards, forget the websites, forget all of the stuff that you think you have to do that's really just busy work. Mm -hmm. You need to, if you're not on the phone, if you're not making offers, you're not making money. And I say this too, like your speed to income is directly proportional to the number of offers that you make. There's nothing, totally. nothing around that, right? So 100%. You just, you got to make a lot of offers. Well, how do you do that? You, you do marketing, it all starts mm -hmm. with marketing. And the other thing, I remember when I was getting started, um, I was working my full-time job, I was a civil engineer, working 60 hours a week, building power plants, right? And I'd get to work at 7 a.m. and leave at 6 p.m. And it was, it was crazy, I worked in my- It was dark it, when you left and dark when you got home. <laughs> I called it my, uh, my, I worked in my cubic hell, right? <laughs> so um, 
I would do deals though. I mean, uh, but it was so sporadic and I don't, I do this huge vicious up and down cycle of uh, do a bunch of marketing, get a bunch of leads and then shut off the marketing because I got a bunch of leads yeah. and I would call the sellers. I would make mm -hmm. offers and uh, then I'd do a deal and it takes a couple deal months to sell the deal and I'm great. I'm happy. I got it. I made five, 10 grand and I turn around and my pipeline's empty. You start all over again. And I, it's not like a switch you can just turn on and all mm -hmm. of a sudden leads start coming and there's this real thing of momentum that's coming through. You know, so I heard one guy, one guy at the time um, say that, uh, and this phrase has stuck with me ever since, um, you need to get your marketing done for you in spite of you. Mm. And that's the key to it. So when I figured that out, I thought, oh, so my problem is I get these bunch of leads shut off the marketing three months later. I start the marketing again. It takes another month or two mm -hmm. for that momentum to get back to where it was. So I, I hired a VA. Mm -hmm. And I said, every day, I want you to go and send out this many. Um, at the time, I was doing a lot of voice blasting when it was easy to do. Yeah. I was doing a lot of emails and texting, a little bit of direct mail. And I just had somebody else do it for me. And then the leads just came in consistently, regularly, consistently yeah. over time. And that's when, you know, within about, at the time I was doing lease options, but within about three months of doing these kinds of deals and flipping these lease options, I was making more money doing that part-time than I was in my full-time mm, job. Mm -hmm. And I was making great money, but it wasn't until I figured out I'm not in the real estate investing business, I'm in the marketing business, that, and I systemized the marketing. I came up with a marketing plan. I worked backwards for my numbers. This is something I teach people all the time. Like, if you want to make 10 grand a month, and let's say your average profit net, net, net after all your costs is five grand. It means you need to do two deals a month. Yeah. All right. Well, if you've got to make 30 offers to do one deal, you need to make how many? 60 offers a month. Mm -hmm. All right. So 60 offers a month divided by four. I don't know. Is it 15 offers a week? Mm -hmm. uh, that's three offers a day. Yeah. Now you're breaking it down into goals you can control. You can't control 10 grand a month. You can't control one deal for every 30 offers you make, but you can control how many offers you're sending, you're making every day. Yeah. And then you work backwards even more. All right, so if I need to make three offers a day, I need to get like five leads a day. So then how do you get those five leads? Maybe it's, you know, you send 500 postcards a week. Uh, you make, you do two hours of cold calling a day. You send a thousand texts a day. Whatever it is, break down that monetary goal that you have into like daily activities and maybe weekly, weekly daily activities and then you ask yourself the question, all right, how can I get someone else to do this for me? How can I get somebody else to just do it for me no matter how busy I am, mm -hmm. no matter what, how bad of a day I'm doing, I have, somebody else is doing all that marketing for me, the leads are just coming in. And then it becomes just easier to do deals. Yeah. Less stressful, less highs and less lows. Um, some deals you're gonna make $20,000 assignment fee on. Some of them you may only make three. But you got somebody else doing that market. That's how you treat this thing like a real business, mm. not as a hobby, right? And, and when I see the students that have the most success is they, they learn that early on and they realize marketing is the most important part of this. Yeah. Yeah, I really love that. Um, I like to think about offers as just acquisitions as like a faucet you turn on that you never turn off, mm -hmm. right? Like no matter what's going on, you, you keep that faucet turned on, which means acquisitions is a daily perpetual thing and yeah. that's how you keep that pipeline full you talked about so that way you're not doing these cycles when i first started full-time in real estate i had these really bad up and down cycles i was a mm -hmm. roller coaster i'd have tons of money and then go six months with no yeah. deals and it's and stressful be, and it was yeah in fact that's i think that's the number one reason why people leave the business yeah. is they they don't learn how to keep the the deals coming monthly when deals come monthly you, you really are building a real business. Well, and, and here's the key to this. We did a study one time. Um, we did like 58 deals in one year. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it, those 58 deals, how many of them came from the follow-up? And 54 of them came yeah, from the follow-up. Yeah, it's in the follow-up. Right? Money's in the follow-up. If we would not have done any follow-up, we would have only done four deals that year. So four deals came from that first phone call, right? So here's the importance of marketing. The more you do, the more consistently you're doing it the bigger and bigger and bigger your follow-up list gets. Yeah. So you're going to find on average a deal is, you know, six to seven touches, maybe two to three months of follow-up on average. So just think if you're get consistently getting these leads coming in, you're consistently sending out offers, you may not get much traction in your first couple, three months. Mm -hmm. Now the deals that start coming in, 
or from the follow-ups that you, from that original yeah, lead your that came in. Tenth follow-up on that mm-hmm. lead from two months ago, three months ago. Yeah. And that's where you start building the momentum. Mm-hmm. It starts going and going and getting bigger and bigger. At first, it's really hard to push. You know, you're building a little, uh, you know, a snowball. It's maybe hard to push that thing, um, but as it gets bigger and bigger, the momentum is just going down the hill. I heard this uh, statistic, Joe, from the National Association of Sales. Yeah. And they said that um, 80% of sales, so this is anything. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, this is huge. Yeah, 80% of sales are made between the 5th and to 12th follow-up. Uh-huh. And how I mean, many people are actually doing that yeah. follow-up? How many people stop before the 5th follow-up, right? Well, yeah, I've seen those stats. I know what you're talking about. But it's yeah. like only 10% of all people in sales actually get there. Actually yeah. ever do that follow-up. So it's yeah. the whole 80-20 thing. Yeah. 80% of your leads are going to come from 20%. Wait. We're doing that right? Well, so yeah, 80% of your deals are going to come from, 20% of your deals are going to, wait, which way would it go? Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. (laughs) But you get the point. You get the point. Like the uh, very few people do, like 80% of the deals will come from 20% of the investors. Yeah. Right, basically. and and Or 20% of your marketing or, you know. So that it's only the few that really understand this and take it seriously. Yeah. And again, we're talking to people here that, you need to treat this like a business, not, not like a hobby. And if you treat it like a business, you say you come up with a marketing plan. And it doesn't have to be complicated. You can write it on a napkin. All right, every day, I'm going to call three realtors. I'm going every week, I'm going to send 500 postcards. Mm-hmm. Um, every day, I'm going to make an hour of cold calls. Um, and then uh, what else could you do? I mean, texting, you could mm-hmm. do cold calling, you could do direct mail, letters. But... Now you figure that out and you start doing it yourself so you learn how to do it and then you outsource it and you get somebody else to do it for you. Yeah, perfect. We hire VAs to do our cold calling. We have a mail company that does our direct mail for us. So it's not me doing that $5 an hour activities anymore. But someone's got to do it. When you're just getting started off, it's important that it gets done. Yeah, and then start focusing on higher value activities, Mm -hmm. moving out of... If you're worth more than $5 an hour, get somebody else to do that thing, right? Mm-hmm. I love that this is the context to start up this um, this video about sellers because everyone that's, before you ever go into acquisitions or talking to sellers, you really do need the proper context of just what it takes to succeed. And it's that consistent effort over time that is going to turn into a lot of deals. And it's a numbers game, right? Yeah, like, it's a numbers game. You know, yeah. I know my numbers, right? It mm-hmm. takes an average of twenty-five offers to do a deal, mm-hmm. and um, I need about thirty leads to make twenty-five offers. Yeah, and uh, so I know so with you my can direct work back mail, into the numbers work back. Yeah. So with my direct mail, if I'm doing conservatively one percent response rate, I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me, but I know I got to send maybe 500, 700 postcards a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, it's a numbers game at that point. Mm-hmm. We have VAs that if, if they do about four or five hours of cold calling, they're going to get six to seven mm-hmm. leads, right? And as yep. lead is anybody that says, yeah, I'll sell my lot. Go ahead and make me an offer. Yeah. Um, so if I know if I want to make 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, 100 grand a month, I need to make X number of mm-hmm. offers. That's when it gets fun. Yeah. That's it's like a it giant is. funnel. A lot comes in the top, and then the deals come out the bottom, and you want more deals out the bottom, put more in, mm-hmm. th- in the top funnel, right? Yep, yep. Great. This is awesome. So, guys, let's now dive into, Joe, uh, some of your favorite methods yes. to find lot owners. Can I share my screen Land owners. Yeah, let's do it. I love what you've been showing us on the screen. All right, so one of my favorite sources for leads is um, PropWire. Now, I get my leads from about two or three different sources, but mm-hmm. um, since this is your software, let's go ahead and talk about it. Because you guys have done some really cool things here. We were looking before, remember we were in Lee County um, looking at, because this is a county where there's a lot of activity. Yeah. So if I go into PropWire. So if you guys remember from our previous video, we researched a county in Florida that had the highest concentration of active listings. And Mm -hmm. it was Lee County, which is down by Fort Myers on the, you know, west side of the, of the state. Yeah. This is just an example, but like when, when we know we have buyers, let's go find some sellers. Right. Now, we're looking for a very specific type of seller, not just any sellers. So we're just going to type in Lee County here, Florida. Now, there's a lot of cool things we'll talk about in here, but one of them is going to be, we're going to click on land. So there are um, 139,000 land uh, properties, vacant lots in Lee County right now, right? And so now we're going to go to advanced. 
And there's a lot of cool things we could do here. Sometimes, like I want to... I know in this county there's a lot of these quarter acre lots that are mm -hmm. being bought and sold. So I, I don't want the really, really tiny ones. So I might do minimum 0.2 acres and I want to do maximum one acre. Um, then I'm going to go here to owner filters. And one of the things I like are out of state owners. Now, mm. um, sometimes it doesn't matter too much, it, but for, for what, I'm, what we're going to do here, we'll do out of state owners. And I like owners that have owned their property for over 10 years. So I might mm, do 10 okay. years. Now, why 10 years? What well, just means like the chances of them, they didn't just buy it. And the chances of them being more open. removed, emotionally removed from yeah. the property, more open to a big discount is bigger. And they're yeah. out of state. And let's see if there's anything else here. I'm good. Now there's some MLS filters, we'll, we'll talk about that next because I love, love, love finding deals on market. So here we go, we just have 0.2 acres to one acre. Uh, they've owned it for over 10 years. And they're out of state. And they're out of state. Now some of my other tools that I use, I can do out of county and out mm. of state, but that's for another discussion. This is gonna give us plenty of leads right here. All right, there we go, we've got 25,000. That's a lot. Vacant landowners that have owned the property for over 10 years that live outside of Florida. Out of state. Hmm. That's a lot, yeah. you know? Yeah. So anyway, if you figured I'm going to send 500 postcards a week to that list, 25,000 divided by 500, will take you a year to mail to all of them, that, right? That whole list. Hmm. Now, um, there's other things you can do if you want to narrow down. Remember before we said, okay, what are the top zip codes? We mm -hmm. found the top three zip codes. Mm -hmm. So we could go in and we could say, all right, just show me in these three zip codes where, who these buyers are. But we could also narrow it down even more. We could go in and say, all right, financial filters. Let's see one, where is the, um, uh, where'd it go? The late taxes. Oh, here it is, tax delinquent year. Let's do 2020. So in the last three years, they've had delinquent taxes. You want to guess how many there are? I don't even know. Probably, I don't know. 9,600. 9,000 people are three have, years behind. Well, have been delinquent. They might have paid it and caught up, right? Okay. But one of the things you'll find, I've, I've researched this and dug into it. Like if you find somebody that was delinquent on their taxes three years ago, Maybe they caught it right before the sale and they brought it back current, but they're going to be late again. It just, and for why couldn't they pay the taxes? Maybe something's going on. They're motivated or something. And that's the point. Are they more, is it, are they a distressed type of person? Are they maybe higher, highly motivated? That's the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something's going on where they can't pay a $200 tax bill. Maybe okay. they just forgot, you know, that they don't care. They're mad at the government. And do but, you recommend going back a couple years typically? Well, you could go. It just depends. one year you don't want to because it's common for people to wait and then pay their taxes, you know. Well, a year you'll later. find some of these when you look into them, though, it, it might have been delinquent for a couple years and then they caught got caught up. Okay. But still, that's a good seller that I like to send mail to because they've owned, again, they've owned it for over 10 years. They're probably sick and tired of paying the taxes. Mm -hmm. They're sick and tired of the HOA bugging them all the time or the city, hey, you need to mow your grass. Um, and you just catch them at the right time. The next tax bill's coming up, and they're like, you know what? Forget it. I, and these are out-of-state owners. These are people in New York and California, and they're just like, ah, oh, I'm sick of it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just get rid of it. You keep on following up with them, and they say, all right, let's sell it to you. So sometime in the last three years, they've been delinquent on their taxes at least once. I don't know if they're still delinquent. And this is a fantastic list, right? 9,600. So you could take all of these. You can now, here in your list... And you can download them all right here and skip trace them. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite dialer that you like to use for cold calling? We're working with a few dialers to add into PropWire. Okay. So, yeah, we're doing some research there. But, yeah, dialer's great because explain why a dialer would be helpful. Well, there's triple dialers. And there's also cold calling tools that you can use that are just for one, mm -hmm. one at a time. Um, and I have some students that are just calling on their cell phone. Yeah. When you're doing a triple dialer, it's faster because now you're dialing three numbers at once. And it picks up whichever one It picks one, one answers. whoever answers. Um, but the numbers we're seeing right now are crazy good. Like for houses, we were getting one or two leads a day from each VA. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting six to seven leads a day from each VA. 
because nobody is cold calling vacant land. vacant landowners. Yeah. You know? And now direct mail still works. So what I like to do, I still do direct mail. In fact, I would say the quality of a direct mail lead is better than the quality of a cold call. Mm -hmm. So with a, you might need 50 cold call leads to do one deal. You probably only need 20 for well, direct Well, think mail. about it. You know, when you send out direct mail, they're picking up the phone and inbounding you, right? So then there's going to be a higher motivation because they're calling you. Yeah, exactly. Whereas when you cold call them, it's kind of like, well, make me an offer. And there's lots more follow-up, longer, longer close yeah. cycle. Yeah, yeah. And that's just anything when you cold call mm -hmm. there's a longer close cycle so i download the list yeah well i love direct mail and uh, direct mail has always been my favorite because here again i can pull a list of people that i want to buy properties from now let me ask you a question this is a strategy i like to use with prop wire is it pulled up nine thousand, but let's say you're like man that's way too big of a list i want a thousand okay well one way is to like just randomly pick a thousand from the nine thousand but why not increase some filters to get you maybe even a, a more targeted list. Yeah. And there's different there's different ways you could do that. You could definitely lead stack. Yeah, so if you went over to all lead types, maybe you wanna start looking at some of those and start adding in some filters. Maybe divorce. Maybe, um, a lot of these filters are more applicable to houses, right? Right, yeah. Because obviously vacant homes wouldn't apply to tired landlords. And even some of the mortgage stuff like like pre-foreclosure would mean they have a mortgage on it. So but almost maybe, all of these are already free and clear anyway. Right? Yeah, so maybe some of these don't apply. Maybe auction or, I don't know, that's going to probably really filter it. But what if you went back to your advanced filters? Is there something you could do there? You could go back to the zip code idea, which is get just the yeah. hot, hottest zip code. That's a great tip. That's a great one. Because some some of the sources where I get leads from account, I'll get 30,000 records. And like, I don't want to buy all of them. Some of them, they won't even let you buy, even if yeah. you could. But so then you filter it down by zip code. But we'll talk about this later. One of my other favorite sources of leads is uh, MLS filters right here. You can look for days on market. Show me all mm. of the ones that have been listed on the market. Let's just do it right now. Yeah, let's see what it All right, up. I, to do this though, I want to make, I want to remove the tax delinquents yeah. there. And uh, so let's say we want properties that are active on the MLS right now. And they've been on the market over eight, six months, which is um, 180 days, right? Mm -hmm. So think, let's look at this again. This is so incredible. These, they've owned it for over 10 years. The yeah. owners live outside of the state. And this is vacant land. And it's been on the market for over six months. 489. 489. That's a cool list. Do you think they want to sell their house? Their, their it's for sale. Lot? Yes, of course. And they've owned yeah. it for over 10 years. They don't live in so, that state. So what would you do with these? Like I right away, I'm thinking I'd offer owner financing. Well, we can talk about that. Because then you can pay more Yeah. because they're overpriced because they're not selling. Let's look at one of them. Let's just pull up this first one here. All right. Obviously vacant lot. It's listed for 20 grand. Why hasn't it sold yet? It's just overpriced. Yeah, it's just you overpriced. Know, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's just overpriced. It's a great area. Now, cool, check this out. If you click show more, oh, Boom. hot banana pants. Look at that, man. There's We've the got agent. the realtor's email and phone number. You know how hard it is to get that information? Even on Redfin, you gotta dig for it. Half the time it's not there. You gotta Google the person. You gotta yeah. call the office. It's a, just so much work. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Well, what if you could contact the listing agent of this property. And they're sick of it too, right? Yeah. They're just like, I'm done with this. They want to get rid of it. You say, hey, Greg, um, I see you got this property that's been listed for six months. Um, I'm an investor. I just wanted to reach out to you. Um, I don't have an agent representing me. You can get both sides of the commission yeah. if you help me Double here, dip. but I'm looking mm -hmm. to buy some deals. How, I'm just curious, I don't want to waste your time, but how negotiable is the seller on their price? Or maybe I'll even first before that, I'll go into like, man, this looks like a nice property. I mean, there's so much activity going on here. Why hasn't it sold yet? Is mm -hmm. there something wrong with it? You know? Yeah. And it's cool when, you, when, when you're doing this for houses, because then you can talk about, well, what needs to be done? What do you think I could sell it for? What could I mm -hmm. rent it for? But I just say, looks like a great property. What am I not seeing? What yeah. am I not seeing? What yeah. am I missing? Why yeah. hasn't this sold yet? I know it's overpriced, but I want the realtor yeah. to tell me that, right? Yeah. Um, and then I can pull up comps right here while I'm on the phone with the realtor. Mm -hmm. Right in prop wire. And yep. I can say, well, geez, I'm seeing some properties here that sold for 8,500 and 7,200 and 10,000. Um, 
how, how negotiable is the seller on their price? And, and, and I'll also be talking to the realtor about, you know, you can represent me. If, you, if it's all right with you, you can get both sides of the commission. Yeah. Um, but I'll just say, I, I'm just look, I want to buy this, but uh, do you, have you looked lately at these comps? <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing things here that sold for 10 and your client's asking for 20. Um, and then sometimes when, when we can look in Redfin, I like to look at active comps mm -hmm. as well. And I, I'll ask the realtor, totally. why would I want to buy, and this is a dumb question, I'm sure your property is much nicer, but why would I want to pay 20 for yours when I can buy this one? For eight. For eight. <laughs> what's, what's the disconnect here? Can you help yeah. me out? Yeah. So this, the realtors usually, like when I tell them, hey, you can represent me. I don't have an agent representing me. You can get both sides of the commission. They'll open up. They're like, and it's amazing. They're, they'll tell you tons of things. Like maybe they shouldn't. Like I've had realtors tell me, well, the law, I know the lowest the seller would go would be this. Or mm -hmm. they might accept something like this. Mm -hmm. Or... So I'll ask them, you know, what's the lowest they would take? How negotiable are there? Are they? Um, sometimes realtors will say, just make an offer. Well, then I'll look and say, well, I'm looking here. I can see one that sold for seventy two hundred, one for eighty five hundred. They wouldn't be like in that price range, would they? Absolutely not. You just kind of get a feel for them. And then I ask the owner financing question. Yeah, right. It's a follow up question. Oh, right? this is huge. So, I, it, I'm just curious. Does the owner make any income? Are they producing any income from this property right now? No, what do you mean by that? Well, maybe I can give them more if they'd be willing to carry back some of the financing. Or do you think they would? They probably wouldn't be open to maybe getting more for the property, maybe something closer to their asking price, if I pay them with payments over time, with owner finance. That wouldn't work, would it? And they're like, well, I don't know. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Let me ask them. Almost every yeah. time, it's like, let me ask them. That's yeah. maybe a good question. And I'll tell the realtor, I'll make sure you still get your full commission. All right? Yeah. And um, always reassure the agent about that. Oh, yeah. Never try to do a zero down or anything like that. You've got to make sure if the agent isn't crystal clear about how they're going to get paid, they will not present your deal. So even if it's a zero down deal, I'll, yeah. till sell, I'll, I'll still tell the realtor, I'll make sure you still get your full commissions. And you don't yeah. have to wait five years. So you'll pay that separate or whatever just to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I let the get... realtor figure out all the paperwork. Yeah. But like yeah. they're expecting, it's not much anyway, no, right? It's like a thousand, two thousand bucks. It's a waste of time, really. So, you know. I'm helping the realtor. The other thing, and I've learned this from you, if I'm going to make a ridiculous low offer, the real I, I explain to the realtor, listen, this is actually going to help you. They'll probably reject mm -hmm. it, but this is actually going to help you sell it later because the more you phrase this so well, and I forget how you said it, but I've, I said something is like, yeah, they're, this is going to help them eventually kind of lower their price yeah. and bring them a little bit back down to earth. So they'll probably reject my offer, but submit it anyway. Yeah. Because then it's going to help them. It's going to help the agent get a price reduction. Yes. Because if, if they're sitting at 20 and they get an offer at 8, they may say no, but now they're going to be much more willing to drop the price to 18, which means you now, agent, are getting closer to getting this property sold. Yeah. So it's in your, in your best interest to present my low offer. Yeah. It's only going to help you get a price reduction and get the house sold. Yeah. And so you got to, but you got, you know, they may not see that. So you got to help them see that. Mm -hmm. And this thing is, these have been on the market for six months. Yeah. So they're, they're almost, most of these realtors are like, they're done with it. They don't care anyway, but they want to, they want to sell it. So yeah. I love your approach though. I like to do that too. And it's really a two-step process where um, I'll anchor with that low cash offer, which is low cash offer is, is where it should be, mm -hmm. right? It's like, that's the number you need to get it for where you can then flip it for 15 or whatever you're going to do. Especially when you sell it with owner financing. Yeah. You can sell it for higher. Yeah, so I'll go in with that low cash offer, and then when they say, no, they won't go that low, then it's perfect follow-up to say, well, you know, um, I could probably pay a lot more. Mm -hmm. If the, Here's how I like to say it. I could probably pay a lot more if the seller was willing to wait to get some or all of his money. Mm. Now, they don't know what they're going to be like, what does that mean? And yeah. it just opens the door to, to yeah. seller finance. Oh, there's so many different creative things you can yeah. do with that. You know, you could... I've never done this, but I know guys who have. They'll they'll pay something now, and make annual payments to the seller. Um, so it's just at that point, it's price or well, terms. creative. Now you got all the options in the world. In the in the land kit that I'm going to give to yeah. your viewers here, right? Um, I'm going to give them the calculator that I have. And we'll okay. do that in another video. Yeah. But you just put in those terms. You put a number of years, interest rate, uh, down payment, and it'll give you calculate an offer. So I like to position cash offer 
and an owner financing offer. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, when you go in here and you get the realtor's email, like we have right here, um, I'll send this realtor an email. You won't even call them? No. Yeah. No, I will sometimes. Yeah. It depends on how lazy I'm feeling, right? But you don't have to call them. Mm. And you can send them an email. And my email, and this calculator I'll give everybody, it, it's in the, the link's in the description. Guys, he's given an entire kit of everything you need to flip land. It's really cool. So, so the, the letters. Link's in the description. Make sure you get this. The letters, the contracts, and the calculators and all that. But anyway, so when you put in the numbers, it gives me a letter that sometimes I'll send to the owner. I want to talk about that. Don't let me forget. But it gives me a, an email that I can copy and paste and send to the realtor. And the, the email just says, hey, Greg, I see you've got this property at address, mm -hmm. MLS number. Um, I'd like to make an offer on it. But I forget how the email is exactly texted. We'll, we'll look at it. But um, my offer is probably going to be rejected. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be at around this number. So I was curious, you know, how negotiable is the seller on their price? And then it says, hey, I can offer them more if they would consider seller financing, maybe payments over time. And then the email will plug in the numbers. And it says, man, I might be able to offer them something like this. So it's kind of an informal email. Mm -hmm. But it gives them the cash offer, and then it gives them the seller financing offer, which is a little higher. Yeah. And then terms. I usually do 10% down. I'll do 4 or 5% interest over five years. So my payment might be 100 bucks a month. Um, it just kind of gets my foot in the door. And then the million-dollar question when you're talking to realtors is, do you have any other properties? Oh, yeah. Always ask that question. They're going to give you, because now they're like, they see that you're serious. They know they're going to make some money with you. And they're I, almost every time, Jerry, I get a realtor says, yeah, you know what? I, I know this other guy. Um, I know this other property that they might want to sell um, or they tried to sell it and it expired. I have a previous client whose listing expired. Let me go back, talk to them. Or this same seller has three more lots yes. that maybe they want to sell. I'll ask them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Always ask that question with agents. So there's one more thing I like to do with this, right? So, But before you do that, yeah, yeah. in that letter, do you? I think you said it, but you also make sure you tell them that you're unrepresented and yes. they can represent you. Yeah, that's very important. The double dip strategy so is I huge. So tell the email, the tell the realtors in the email, you can represent me yeah. and get both sides of the commission. And then I also even later tell them I pay 10% commissions yeah, when huge. I sell my deals. Yeah. 10%. But yeah. On a, if I'm if no so this property here, let's say they're selling it for 20, I might buy it for 5. Um, with cash, I might buy it for 10 or 12 with owner financing. I'll turn around and sell it for maybe 18 or 19 um, on owner financing. And so I can make a quick $10,000 kind of gross wholesale mm -hmm. profit. Or if I sell it with owner financing, it'll be like And if you sold it cash, what would you try to get? 12 or whatever, 15? Yeah. Something. I, I always price my properties aggressively. So I yeah. would look, and we'll show you this yeah. later, in Redfin. I'll look to see what my competition is. Yeah. And if I see a bunch of properties that are for sale for 15 which I'm going to guess in this area, I'm going to price mine at like 13. Yeah. You don't want to sit on it and compete with everybody uh -uh. else. Right. So I like, now from here on this property we're looking at, this one's been listed for six months. If I just click on the owner, you can see they live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Love Ventures LLC. They have an LLC. I can skip trace them. Look, Look how, many how many properties they own. 407 properties. Wow. A lot, a lot of, of vacant land. land. So this a might be a buyer land. too, right? Yeah, Once you yeah talk to this them, could be a buyer. It, they could become a lender even. Yeah. I mean, how many how many private lenders have you found from buyers? Or they may have a bunch of stuff they'll sell you at a discount. Yeah. So you can skip trace them. You can send them a letter. Um, and sometimes it comes up with emails. You can send their owners an email. So these are just some of my simple favorite ways. Now, everything we just did here, you can outsource and have a VA do for you. Yeah. Right. You can have a VA send an email to the realtors. You can have a VA send the letters. You can do these letters one off, one at a time, or mm -hmm. you can download 500 and do 500 a VA at can a cold time. call. Mm -hmm. So that's what I prefer. So again, Jerry, one of the things I really love about this is now you could go in something like Redfin and you can say, all right, show me um, all the vacant lots that have been for sale for over 30 days, over 60 days that has price reduced, but then also keywords like motivate. Mm -hmm. You can type in the word motivated. Right now there are, in this window here on the left, there's 195 vacant lots that have the word motivated in there. And if you click on one of them, you can look, read the description and find out what the story is. And um, 
you can see right there, motivated seller, right? Yeah. And then okay. you just find the uh, find the realtor, look them up. You put that address into PropWire, get information on who the owner is. You can send the owner some marketing. Um, all of this is like just every day, right? Yeah. Every day, get a VA to go find these deals, um, put them in your database, your CRM or whatever. Um, send them a letter, send the owner a letter, send the owner a postcard, send the realtor an email, send the realtor a voicemail or something like that. And um, just every day keep on doing this and then follow up. There's yeah. no excuse. There's no more excuses. No, you've really people. taken away the, all the excuses. And what's cool is your toolkit, which is free, guys, in the description there's a link to Joe's free toolkit to start flipping land. He's got um, this automated offer tool yeah. where you literally... Plug in some information, it's gonna spit it out for you like exactly the script and what to say and you send that to the agent or you say that to the seller. I mean, you've just taken like all the work out of this and made it really easy for people to start doing. The script I use with realtors, um, we're gonna talk next about how to talk to sellers, I'll yeah. put that in there. Um, also the letters that I use. Yeah. I, I have some simple letters that I like to send out and, and let me just explain what those are real quick. But it's, it's, it's a letter that has the reference number up there and it says, hey Jim, I think you own a 2.6 acre lot in such and such an area. If you're interested in selling it, I might be interested in making an offer. Please text or call my 24 hour recorded voicemail. And that 24 hour recorded voicemail, the reason I say that is it gets more calls. They mm. know when they call, nobody's gonna answer, right? So I get more calls that way. My voicemail just says, hey, this is Joe, thanks for calling. If you've got a vacant lot you wanna sell, give us your name and number and give us the reference ID up there on that letter or that postcard and we'll send you an offer in a couple days. That's it, it's a real simple voicemail. They leave a voicemail with that reference number. And so lo sometimes a lot of vacant land doesn't have um, an address on it. Yeah, there's yeah. No, there's nothing built on it yet. So I don't want them to give me a really long APN number or the G really long GPS coordinates or whatever. Just give me <laughs> a reference number that's on that letter. Then my teenagers get a couple, <laughs> three times a week, they go through, or now my VAs, they listen to that voicemail, they put it into the system, they go to Redfin, they go to Zillow or whatever, and they find comps, they help. They come up with an offer. And uh, so now the cool thing about with direct mail especially is you're sending out a bunch, 500 a week or whatever, the calls come back in, um, go to voicemail, you send them an offer, and out of we're averaging one out of every 25 to 30 offers. Amazing. Yeah. Gets accepted. So, so they'll cool. call us back, or they raise their hands. We have sometimes they, Jerry... They'll just sign the contract we send them and send it back to us and we've never even talked to them. That's happened many times. Imagine that, locking up a deal with a seller, signing a, and executing a contract and never actually talking to the seller. It's happened many, many times. Guys, I know there's people watching this right now that that sounds very dreamy, right? To not have to talk to sellers. But it's, it's always good to talk to sellers, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like you will do more deals if you talk to sellers, Yeah. but you don't have to. Right. So you, you could do point. this if you're living in you know, the Middle East, if what you're I, living in the South The other thing America. I love about this is uh, we have a lot of people that are part-time in it, so they have regular work hours. Yeah. And it's hard to get a hold of sellers, yeah. you know, in, in the off hours. Or so, you're tired. You don't want yeah. to talk to sellers. Yeah. So this, Maybe English is a second language. You don't feel confident enough with it. Yeah. We have a lot of students all over the world that are doing land deals here, right? And uh, it's, there's, it's, sometimes it's a little more challenging if you're not here in the U.S., maybe. But I've lived in Prague um, mm -hmm. in the Czech Republic for three months, mm -hmm. twice, with all four of my kids and my wife, and did deals from Europe yeah. here in the United States. Totally. So it's very easy to do. And with the time zone changes especially, send out the letters, go as to voicemail, send them an offer. You only talk to the ones that raise their hands right. and say, yeah. Well, for that chance when you do get on the phone, because like you said, that is powerful, we're going to do the next video, which is going to be all about what you say, how you position yourself, some of your best scripts on talking to sellers and maybe agents as well, and really make sure that you're comfortable with that conversation and how to present yourself, how to present your offer. Really important to do that. And this that's a repetition thing. We'll talk about that as well. But guys, before we end this video, be sure to get that free toolkit. Joe's graciously put together some of his best things all combined in a toolkit to help you flip your first or next land deal in as little as 30 days. Like you legit could be doing your first deal that fast. Mm -hmm. So that, again, that link's in the description. Go ahead and get that free resource and we'll see you on the next video.